Morning all. Let's have another look at Harry Nelson Pillsbury in the critical last round of Hastings 1895, which by the way Kasparov has referred to as the most important tournament of the 19th century. A lot of key players were in that tournament and it was an amazing achievement for Harry to win it. But in his last round, you know, he really had to win it. Although he was leading the field by half a point, point according to Wiki, um, he had originally assumed a draw would be enough. And unfortunately, the game had therefore started with kind of dry, placid Queen's game declined. A lot of pieces traded off. Then to his horror, he kind of discovered that uh, Shagorin was winning his game and if you know therefore he would have to win to take clear first now I, I checked this game with uh, Ribka and it's actually incredible the total precision which Harry displayed here so on hearing this news he has to win this kind of seemingly uh, drawish endgame position it's not so clear-cut Although there might be seemingly a thematic breakthrough move here, uh, what followed was actually kind of amazing. Um, so his opponents, you know, no easy opponent, Gunsberg. Uh, there's an interesting, uh, you know, information on Wiki about Gunsberg. He was actually the player inside this chess automation called Mephisto, and later he was a chess professional. He finished midway, actually, in Hastings 1805, and he was considered, actually, to be one of the strongest players in the world. But here, okay, it's far from clear. I'll give you uh, 10 seconds to have a look if you can find the first move, okay, which looks like a thematic breakthrough. That's the clue. Okay, so starting from now. Okay, the move F5. It's striking at Black's pawn structure, undermining that base of the chain. If 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 D5 can be weakened, then obviously it's, it's going to be easy to play. So a bad continuation from Black would be, you know, something like this. E takes that that would make it easy, because um, then G takes. There's there's Knight F4 hitting at D5. Uh, so say say like this. This would be just terrible losing D5 because then F6 is going to drop. There's still maneuvers possible like. You know, to f4. Okay, no, black sealed up wisely the, the f4 square. So this is why it's not so clear. How did Harry, you know, win from this position? Well, he combines tactics and, and positional play here, and an insight of the resulting king and pawn ending, kind of deep. Okay, so he plays knight b4. So again, e takes f5 is obviously a terrible move. You know, don't want to drop d5. Now there's a major tactical threat, c6, c7, if the pawn gets to c7, that's the end of the game, because uh, it'll be threatening, you know, c takes and c8, so there'll be no king d7s. So, black doesn't want that to happen, and in fact, if he directly tries to stop c6 now with king d7, then here, uh, can you see, basically, actually, um, I'll show you, if takes, then c6 here, Now, Harry could win this technically with a pawn decoy. So five seconds here. Okay, he could play c7 in this position and get to that d5 pawn and that would be winning because then f6 would drop. But no, Black's putting up a stern uh, defense here. He doesn't play uh, like that. He plays in this position a5. Okay. So here, c6 is played, offering the knight. So if this knight sacks taken, then c7 is, is winning. King d7, you just take the knight. Knight c6, you just queen with c8. Right. So king d6 was played. Now here is real decoying genius at work. What would you play here now in this position? So your knight's attacked, you've got a vulnerable pawn on c6. What would you play? So if I give you 10 seconds here. Oh, 
Right, F takes E6. Major decoying. Right. Now let's see, if Knight takes C6, well that was the game continuation we're going to have a look at. This looks a bit unclear. Hasn't White's pawns been mopped up here? The king can now defend against e6. What's going on here, you might ask? Has Harry completely blundered? It's all been actually calculated. There's another subtle decoy involving, uh, you know, another pawn sack. He plays knight takes c6, king takes c6, and here can you guess the move? This is a very fine, delicate path to travel through to win this end game. So 10 seconds here. And believe it or not, it is actually technically winning. Checking, uh, you know, with, with an engine here. So the move here, e4. Of course, e7, the pawn's just going to get mocked up. There's no point, king d7. So e4 celebrates that advanced pawn and after takes now Harry plays d5 check so these pawns are providing strength to each other this pawn can't be got at now this pawn can't be got at because of that pawn so the pawns are a, are a unit very strong unit very advanced unit on d5 and e6 the king's away from the action for the moment but it's quickly getting in now with king e3 to restore material balance at least and not only restoring material balance but giving a completely winning king and pawn ending after all that so black tries to use his outside past pawn potential but it's it's guardable now the king has time to mop up on e4 after a4 to return back decisively um, h5 was played in the game it's all completely lost now though if b3 let's have a look at b3 here white could just take and the king's inside like the square to be able to catch the pawn so with that those pawns on d5 and e6 you you know white has got a free hand it seems with, with his king to deal with black and force the zugzwang position in in the game um you know h5 was played here and this lost with g takes after a3 king c4 black can't arrange a fast pass pawn because now h6 and then h7 forced black's resignation but let's have a look at this from another angle now in this position um, you know let's say king e7 how does white win this with the king? So king d4. Black's just really a spectator here. It's it's the king march forcing the zugzwang because also another feature of the landscape of this endgame is that this pawn's actually doing a fine job against these two guys, you know, with restraints of f5 and h5. So it's forcing a nasty kind of zugzwang. If king e7, you know, compulsions move with, with disastrous consequences here. There's no holding this position. These pawns are just getting mopped up at leisure. Um, so part of the disaster is, is, as I say, the restraints of this pawn on f5 and h5. So if f5, you know, this, this attempt to create a pass pawn is refutable. There's a few winning moves here. Well, king, king b4, for example, just f6 here now e7 and here okay this this is this is a dangerous looking position with the king too far over there you might say but actually d6 and say g3 now f7 so white's uh, queening first well, with check as well here, check. It's remarkable, isn't it? This end game is full of a, it's a bit of magical, really, because because two two major things happened in Harry's favour here after this remarkable decoy move here. Um, 
the the connected pawns in the center are very advanced protecting each other so invulnerable but also this pawn is doing a heroic job job in this ending of restraining a majority of pawns on the on this side of the board the king side so the king is also highly energetic in being able to mop up e4 and return back to suppress the pass pawn potential over here so what seems to me ordinarily um okay i wouldn't normally take an end game position like this and try and do a video out of it because but the, the stakes of this game were so high you know harry felt you know he needed to win this game to secure first at the you know this classic hastings 895 tournament so it was actually a brilliant continuation after you know being wrong footed he didn't really want to get this kind of dry position with minimal chances but he's been playing you know like like Ribka here like a 3200 from this position move after move after f5 is absolutely brilliant you know this is the top like you know Ribka move here knight b4 no other move will do uh, it seems you know it gives a big big advantage knight b4 no other move again c6 it's like he's turned into Ribka basically here this move again f takes e6 fine precision only move to not get a disadvantage here is f takes e6 if king c if c7 black gets the advantage you know king takes the knight has to move e takes this would be a disaster black's winning this position uh, you know he's got the majority on on the king side look what happens here you know there's there's past pawn potential on both sides of the board here for black black will be winning this end game so the actual precision and the number of moves here I've not seen this before um, especially you know a game in 1895 we're talking about so c6 only move to make sure white retains an advantage in this end game only move again f takes e6 only move again knight takes c6 as you guess only move e4 you know if any other move this is this is one of those very very sharp positions where there's only one way of winning it uh, you know this this would be winning for black this position he had to play e4 it creates that unit of pawns on d5 and e6 which now along with this this restraining pawn on on g4 g4 this remarkably is a winning king and pawn ending for white a pawn down here temporarily but after king e3 white's winning it seems white's technically absolutely winning this now what a trick what what a tricky end game position so this was the game continuation okay amazing stuff from harry showing amazing <laughs> you know end game play comments or questions on youtube Thanks very much.